Welcome to the Rustic Garden Homestead. Today we are going to get herbs, flowers, some cool weather crops started. These are plants that you can start 10, 12, 14 weeks before they're ready to go outside. I'm in Maryland Zone 7, so I'll show you the plants that I'm getting ready in a second. Seed starting mix. This is a 12 quart bag of seed starting mix. I use a large container like this. What I want to stress for this video is you want to sterilize this. You can moisten it up, put it in a plastic bag, I have videos on that, microwave it for a minute or two, or you can use boiling water. The reason you do that is because most of these starting mixes, no matter where you buy them, they have fungus gnat eggs in there and the boiling water will help kill them and it will really stop a problem that can be a huge nuisance if you're growing indoors. I also have seed starting cells and trays at my seed shop if you want to check that out. I have a bunch of the six cells, the four cells, that's all for you know starting a lot of seeds where you're going to transplant them up into bigger cups. I also sell a version of these, I don't have these exact ones, but larger cells where you can start your tomatoes, your peppers in there and you can just leave them in there for the six, eight, ten weeks so you don't have to pot up. Alright, let's walk over here, get the boiling water. So again, it's one bag, 12 quarts, I really wouldn't recommend trying to do like 24 quarts or anything like that at once. It's just hard to mix. So you're going to get boiling water. See if I can do this one-handed. Be very careful. I've done this before. And you're going to just pour it into here. Now, it's going to vary on how dry your mix is, but about half a pot like that to start. If you oversaturate it, um, just add in some more potting mix. So you're going to give this a mix and you're really going to want the heat to go through. Let me do that and we'll come back in a second. Now I use that whole pot in 12 quarts. So that'll give you an idea of how much you'll need to use. And you just want to make sure you scrape all the sides and just get the water mixed well through. Now of course use a wooden spatula or something sturdy. This is hot even to the touch. But what I'd like to do after that is pack it down and just let the heat stay in there. When you pack it down, the heat will stay in longer and it will take care of any problematic fungus gnat eggs. And, you know, just let it sit like this for about 10 minutes. Let me answer a few questions about starting seeds indoors. The one question I get often is, do I need to start my seeds indoors? And the answer is maybe, but no, if you can directly plant your seeds out into containers, you can get them into the earth beds, and your season is long enough. I'm in Maryland zone seven, but if you're in a zone where you don't worry about frost and cold, you can plant your seeds outdoors and you just wanna make sure you have enough time for them to get to maturity. Now, even if you have that, you may wanna start your seeds indoors for this reason. And that reason being, all these seeds that are in here, if I had them scattered throughout different containers, throughout my yard in different places, I'm going to go out and have to water them and care for them. This is a great way to concentrate everything into a space like this. Saves me time, I get them growing, I get established transplants and I can go put them out into any garden. Now, if you are in a zone where you have a short growing period, you definitely want to start your seeds indoors because you can get them started anywhere really from 4 weeks to 8 weeks to 12 weeks to 16 weeks indoors get a jump on the season, they're going to be at a good size and then they're going to be able to go out into your gardening zone and grow to maturity. Now, again, end of January, I want to just show you some of the plants that I start 10, 12, 14 weeks early. There's a lot of different ones, but these are the ones that I grow in my area. We have um, the herbs oregano, thyme, and chives, also spearmint in there. They can grow indoors really 10, 12 weeks before you want to get them outside. I overseed them. I'll link a video that shows you how I do that and also give you an example in this video. If you want to go to my seed shop and find the Grow As I Grow collection, I'm going to be using those in all my videos this year so you can actually watch in video in real time on how I grow these, take them out into the garden, take care of them and get them to harvest. In the back here, I'm growing a lot of different um, perennial flowers this year. I highly recommend perennials because they will come back year after year, but I have yarrow, coreopsis, um, the columbines. Uh, they do really well in my zone. I want to get them started now. If you start flowers indoors, sometimes you'll be able to get them to bloom the first year depending on the different variety. But the flowers I'm starting now are perennials. I have more perennials over here, yarrows, reds, golds. My lavender goes in now. That grows really slowly. Lemon balm. And in the back I have larger containers. The six cells, the four cells, 
Where are they? Back there. A lot of times I overseed them and then I divide them up and then I up pot them into larger containers. The plants back here I'm not going to up pot. So if you get bigger cells, you can just leave them in there. And that's a question I get a lot. Do I have to start my plants in these small cells? And the answer again is no. If you want to start in something larger like this, you can leave the plants in there the full time. These would be perfect for tomatoes and peppers or eggplants and just let them grow, you know, the eight weeks and then you get them outside. And again, these will be in my seed shop. Maybe not this exact um, cell here, but something similar to that. They'll be well marked. So that's a bit of a strategy. If you're starting as much as I do, you want to use sometimes the uh, smaller six cells. That'll let you get 72 in there. If you're just starting a few plants, go ahead and get something like this and you can just leave them in there the whole time. You don't have to do that extra work of potting them up into bigger pots. And because I'm talking in case I forgot, back there are lupines, purple cone flowers, shasta daisy, and blazing star. And these are just plants that the root systems I don't want to disturb. So I put them into bigger pots and I will let them grow in there until I put them out into the ground. Now, after about 10 minutes, your starting mix is in the containers, the container pressed down, just go and fluff it up. You can still see some steam coming out there. You want this to cool down to, you know, like 100 degrees or so before you start putting your seeds in there. I'm going to show you how I thumb pack and set up the cells, and then we'll do um, an overseeding, the overseeding method I do with rosemary and some other seeds, just to, so you can see how to do that. So the starting mix is cooled down. You want enough moisture in there so that when you squeeze it, very little or no water comes out. You can see just a couple of drips. Don't oversaturate it. You always want to work with moist starting mix because when it's in the cells and you bottom water, you just put water in your tray, it will absorb from the bottom quickly when your seed starting mix is already moist. If you put dry mix in there, you put seeds in there, because the mix is dry, sometimes the seeds drop to the bottom, but it actually floats on the water and it could sit there for 24, 48, even 36 hours before it absorbs the water. Once it's moist, it just wicks the water up real quickly. But again, you want to put the hot water in here. I really stress that um, because it will kill the fungus net eggs. The other question I get about seed starting mixes um, or starting seeds indoors, can I take soil from the outdoors and mix it in here? I wouldn't do that because you're bringing in fungus, molds, and insects that could be problematic. I mean, you could try the hot water, but I would try and go with the sterile mix. Some people have success doing that and, you know, more power to them. And that's going to happen. Different zones, you can do different things. In my zone, I can't do that. Now, six cell tray, the basic one I use, you put it in like that, you think it's full. That's not enough. You want to thumb pack it down. You want to really push the starting mix, the moist starting mix, down to the bottom makes good contact and then put a second layer on there, press it in, and that's how I set up my starting cells for planting. Let me set up some trays and we'll get to the seeds. Alright, so I'm going to show you how I seed start rosemary in there. These are Walla Walla onions. I'm going to show you how I overseed the onions too. We're going to also do lavender and peppermint. Peppermint will count as the same way that I do oregano and thyme and those herbs. Um, in a future video, I'm going to do the perennial flowers, but I want these to germinate so you can see what they look like. So please subscribe to my channel. I'll be doing a lot more seed starting at least all the way through February. Tomatoes will get put out into the seed trays probably the beginning of March. So this is rosemary. And I talk a lot in my videos, don't just put one seed in there. You're going to be sitting around waiting. And if that seed doesn't germinate, then you've wasted time. Rosemary and lavender like to be put in the refrigerator for five to seven days. Let them get cold. It helps with the germination rate. But I'm going to take, let's see, probably six to eight rosemary seeds and put them in each cell. You can divide these in half and you're going to get, you know, when you split them, one to three plants in the split. So six or eight rosemary seeds into there. So this is really going to be split when they get larger, so it's going to be 12 rosemary plants. And think about how much money you're saving, because if you go and buy a rosemary plant, it can be anywhere 2 to $4, depending on the size. Once they're on the surface, 
and I've done a lot of experiments about depth. I put tomatoes in at the bottom, halfway through, uh, halfway down, right on the top, and you know what? All the tomatoes germinated. Some seeds would be a problem, but if you just mix them in to the top quarter, even almost to a half of the cell in depth, they're going to germinate. This is a loose starting mix. They're going to break right through there. So I'm just mixing in the six to eight seeds of rosemary. And I'm going to do the lavender too, but this is essentially how I do lavender. They're low germination rates, even when you refrigerate them. So you want to put in more seeds so you're not waiting around. Once you've mixed them in, press them in. You've got six or eight seeds in there. So if one stays on the top, don't worry about it. If one goes down too deep, don't worry about it. You're going to have germination and you'll be able to split this and get at least two plants out of it. Now, because we thumb packed it, this is a nice, dense pack of starting mix and the root systems are going to love it. You don't want it to be too loose. Pack it in there. So rosemary dated for 127. Now, onions, these are the Walla Walla onions. I, this is how I do um, basically all of my onions. I'm going to put in 12 to 15 onion seeds in here. And of course, we're not going to divide them into half because there's too many. Onions are almost indestructible. I have a lot of videos on growing onions this way. You can look them up. But you're basically mixing in 12, 15 seeds. You're going to let them start indoors. Some onions take 150 to 170 days. So you want to get them started now. And the roots are like wires. They're almost indestructible. You can just break them apart. So we'll end up somewhere between once they've all germinated and viability and all that. 8 to 12 onions in each of these. I just take out the whole cluster, break them into individual onions, and then I go plant them in a garden five inches apart. This is going to hold, let's just go with eight, eight, 16, 24, 32 onions. All started indoors just like this. All right, let me clean this up and we'll get to the next seeds. All right, now we're going to seed start lavender and peppermint. And peppermint has the same size seeds as oregano and thyme, but I'm also going to show you how to uh, seed start oregano or thyme right after this. Lavender, it almost looks like rosemary. Rosemary and lavender are slow to germinate, so you start them 10, 12, 14 weeks early. I'm putting in six to eight seeds, and we're going to mix them in. Now, lavender, rosemary, sometimes it germinates, some will germinate in a week. I've been doing this for years. Sometimes I get a couple that pop about seven, 10 days, and then more pop. 14 to 20 days and I've gotten some almost four weeks later. So they're just very slow to germinate. They do need that cold period and we're just going to scratch them in you know, about a quarter way depth, quarter inch. You don't have to over worry about it. We can divide this later. But again these are all seeds that I start 10, 12, 14 weeks early because they grow slowly and sometimes they take a while to germinate and then you'll just put in lavender that's the munstead variety now this is peppermint I might have said spearmint you can see how small it is this is what oregano and thyme look like I don't know how many seeds are in there probably 15 20 25 I'm just gonna go right across the surface using the cell of four once peppermint is established once Spearman has established any of the mint family, they're almost indestructible. Because they're so fine, I'm not going to go as deep on these. You just want to scratch them under. And that's how I set up my peppermints, spearmint, all of my mints. We're going to do oregano and thyme right after this. And then just make sure. You mark what you've planted, you will forget, you'll remember for that day, but once you have something like this, you're not going to be able to remember. Okay, we'll get to oregano and thyme. All right, we have the oregano and the thyme. Before we get to that, a couple more questions. A lot of people ask me, how often do you water? Well, that's going to vary, but what I can tell you, and you can see 
from the plants that I planted yesterday, the starting mix starts to dry on the top. So you wait until the top is dried. Moisture will always stay down at the bottom, so you're not going to have to worry about your plants not getting enough water. But you want the tops to dry out. That also helps prevent fungus gnat, mold, and different funguses. Let the top, the dark part of the seed starting mix, get light. Let it go for a day or two. Let it dry. That will really help keep your seed starts clean. Also, your oregano, your thyme, um, a lot of plants don't like to stay moist 24-7. They can get fungus, they can get um, dampening off diseases, and they're going to die back. Let them dry. It helps them out. So we'll take the oregano, small seeds, almost identical to thyme, and I have, we're gonna, ooh, well, we're going to have oregano all over the place. Now I just spilt them. So the six cells and the four cells. I'm taking a pinch. A pinch is a lot of seeds, and I don't even know how many I'm putting in there. At least 20, 25, right across the top. You get thousands of seeds of oregano. Same thing, sprinkle them across the top of the four cells. Never wait around for one or two seeds to germinate when you're doing these, the herb, the oregano, the thyme. And we just mix them in just like that. I'll do the rest off video, save you some time. And then press them in. They're moist enough. You don't have to water right away, but again, always bottom water. I'll do future videos on that. And just mark your oregano. And then a thyme is almost exactly the same way, if not the exact same way. Take the seeds, sprinkle them across the top, probably 30 or 40 seeds in there, less than the six cells. And if you subscribe, you'll get to see how these grow and how I divide them up, feed them, and take care of them until they're ready to go out into the ground. And again, scratch them in. And the whole idea is, is you're just putting in a lot of seeds, and we're going to divide these in half. We're going to tear these apart, and we're also going to tear the four cells apart. So you could take four cells, get them growing, split them. You get four. Let them grow some more, split them again. So you can keep dividing a lot of your herbs down and you could have more to plant give away and if you're doing plant yard sales like I used to you can sell them and just press them in. Alright so hopefully this gives you some confidence in getting your seeds started especially the different varieties that can be started 10, 12, 14 weeks ahead of time. Thanks for watching. Please check out my seed shop at www.therustedgarden.com. Thanks for watching.